Thank you for staying with us this hour on One American News. I'm Stephanie Myers. Before Obamacare went into effect, Americans had many health insurance plans to choose from. Obamacare was championed as a solution to overhaul the U.S. health care system, but there continues to be many problems with the insurers pulling out of the exchange. However, the Biden administration continues to stand by the act. One family who continues to experience the hardships is that of Christopher Briggs. He joins us now to tell us more about his daughter's story. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You've written op-eds about how Obamacare does not eliminate discrimination against patients with pre-existing condition, conditions, citing your daughter's leukemia diagnosis when she was just two years old. Tell us a little bit more about your story. Well, so my story starts in 2003 when I set up my own uh, consulting firm. And I did this because I knew that um, I had many choices for healthcare to cover myself and my family. And we have a fairly large family. Colette, my daughter, who has, has this uh, cancer problem, was uh, is one of nine. And um, we were we had great, great coverage until Obamacare went into effect in 2014. Within a few weeks of that passage of that uh, of the going into effect, we lost our health care and our premiums doubled. Uh, and that story continued into the next year, which is 2015. It got really, really expensive, however, in 2015 at the end in November when my daughter was diagnosed with cancer. And we discovered the really un other unfortunate part of Obamacare, which is the huge deductible and max amount of pocket expenses. We we have we're still paying off the debt for, from that. Um, and but what, what got really scary, however, was in 2017 when Donald Trump, you know, let out a tweet um, just questioning the our uh, paying huge subsidies to, to these insurance giants for really inadequate care. And with an overnight, uh, our provider Anthem decided that it would no longer cover uh, anybody in Northern Virginia, including our daughter. Um, most insurers pulled out. 500,000 people lost their insurance overnight for the following year in 2018. This was in in, in the fall of 2017. There was one insurance company that was left was Cigna Connect. They decided to stay in the marketplace. The problem was they agreed to cover my daughter's care at her clinic, but wouldn't cover her care at the hospital where a lot of this uh, care is delivered. The chemotherapy is injected into the spinal column uh, multiple times in a month, in some cases for daughters like, like mine. And they were not gonna cover her at the hospital. Um, so we ended up having to lose our care under the Affordable Care Act. I had to shut down part of my business and uh, join a, a friend's uh, organization uh, to have their insurance for that year at great expense. It was almost $3,000 a month in premiums. My premiums before this had been about $1,000 a month, uh, probably not, not, not even that high. And our max amount of pocket um, you know, under the Affordable Care Act went from about $4,000 a month. In some cases, we've had to pay as many as $16,500 a month. Um, and um, we had to raise money from family and friends to be able to pay for that year. Um, last in 2019, we ran out of the money, so we had to go back into the Affordable Care Act, uh, and we picked uh, an, uh, Anthem again. They had come back in the marketplace with a better plan, and we had them assure us that they would not you know, do this to us again. Um, and what ended up happening is in March of last year, 2020, we got a notice from uh, our clinic telling us that if, uh, Anthem would now cover the hospital, but not where her, her clinic is. So she couldn't go to her clinic, but she could go to the hospital. And anybody who's been dealt with childhood cancer knows that um, care is delivered at both of these places, at the clinic and at the hospital, and both are necessary. And uh, we ended up having to go back again, as we did in 2017. Uh, we went into Mark Warner's office, and he, over the weekend, he and his staff managed to convince Anthem to come back in, but only for a, you know only for a year. So that we only had promises that we would be covered through March of 2021. Um, so we ended up this for this current year, we ended up not pulling out back out of the marketplace. Virginia has a law. I, I live in Virginia now has a law that my single member LLC, which is what, what I, my company is can now buy group insurance. But the problem is, is that the premiums are now almost $3,000 a month. So whereas I used to pay maybe $12,000 a year for premiums, I'm not going to be paying close to f almost $40,000. And the maximum amount of pocket here is, is just, it's huge. I mean, I'll be spending out of pocket probably close to $50,000 a year in cash just to provide care uh, for my family and for a daughter recovering from cancer, um, whereas it used to cost me just a fraction of that. Yeah. And it, it just, it's a remarkable story of, you know, high prices in a kind of command economy, we learned the hard way, you know, is not like high prices in a free market economy. High prices in a free market economy mean 
that another provider can come in and provide the same care at lower price or, or at the same price. Um, high prices in a command economy mean you're heading to scarcity. I mean, there's nothing to buy at, at some point. And that's what we ended up getting an early version of that. Um, and what I what I fear is that, you know, the arguments you hear this all the time from people that we, that we are associated with. Well, listen, if we just had single payer, wouldn't that just take care of all this sort of uncertainty? And it, it's true. We would all be provided care, you know, from the government. But that scarcity isn't going to go away. That scarcity just gets institutionalized. It goes septic. So you've heard about these waits in Canada, for instance, for 17 weeks for a cancer diagnosis. I mean, that is nothing other than scarcity made permanent and institutional. Mm -hmm. So I fear that if we don't, you know, I had hoped we would keep the keep the Senate, the Republicans would, because then we'd have a way to sort of fight back against this. But now with, the, with Biden in office and the Democrats controlling everything, I really fear that uh, we're just going to get government health care from, you know, from, from end to end. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's going to be just a massively bad experience, you know, for families with children who are healthy and certainly for ch children who are sick. And to your point, you know, that's a, a great point that you make because, you know, some people are talking about, as you said, that single, single payer health care system. But then, as you said, the quality of care that you receive, it goes down dramatically because there's only so many resources. Talk a little bit further because your insurer dropped coverage for Colette's treatment in March of 2020. You touched on that and how Obamacare blocked your family from switching to a plan that would have covered it. Correct. What sort of steps, you mentioned your company, what sort of steps has your family taken for Colette to continue her treatment? Well, right. So um, that's exactly right. So we, our first move when we when we had our, our problem was to ask the Affordable Care Act, could we buy the plan that was next that was still available that would cover both the hospital and her clinic, and they refused to give it to us. So facing the same, possibly the same problem for 2021, I took uh, Virginia has a new law that allows me to buy group insurance on the open market, uh, f even though I'm not a group, I'm a, I'm a single member. But they passed this law back in 2018, probably in, partly in response to the the furor that I caused. You know, I went to the post, Washington Post and had a big article about this. Um, the problem here is, of course, that the premiums are as they were when I did this the last time. It's about three thousand dollars a month, and our max amount of pocket is is you know probably is close uh, closing in on ten thousand dollars. So, I, I mean, we're going to have to dig deep. And I've got kids going to college. We're looking at how we pay for that in, in light of having to provide for my daughter's care. No, thankfully she's in remission. Mm -hmm. um, so her doctor's visits are less frequent, but she's in this window where if it comes back, which it could, she's in this sort of interim period, um, it will more likely you know, probably end her life. So we can't take a risk with this. We couldn't go through a third episode where the government tells you it's going to provide health care. And then midway through the year, they have the right to do this. They can pull out whenever they want. You're left hanging with literally no options except calling your senator and getting, you know, uh, browbeating a private company to come back into the marketplace. I mean, it, it's just a, an awful way to run a healthcare business. Right, and we're, we're so happy to hear that, Colette. She's in remission, thank goodness. Yes. Pre pres and as you mentioned, Biden said he not only plans to protect Obamacare, but then build upon it. What's your message to him and lawmakers alike who say the Affordable Care Act is successful? You talked a little bit about your conversation with Virginia Senator Mark Warner. Can you discuss that a little further in your message to them? You know, well, my message would be we need to take a very serious look at, at health care. Uh, if my daughter had gotten sick under the plan that I had before, which is before Obamacare, I would never have had any interruption in service. It would not be considered a pre-existing condition. I could have covered her as long as she was dependent on me. And for the rest of her life, she could have gotten coverage in the, in the private market and be fine. Thanks to Obamacare, she now has a permanent existing pre-existing condition, uh, can never get private insurance ever again. Um, and well, either under me or under under any her own plan. She has to stay with a government plan forever. And, and, you know, the Democrats know this. As long as they have a plan that's run by the government that isn't really insurance, a nation of pre-existing conditions is being created. And if we let this go too long, you simply cannot repeal then uh, a, a government plan that can't accommodate pre-existing conditions. And that this is what I fear, is that we're heading, basically, the entire country is going to experience the health care at the Veterans Administration. President Trump said he fixed that. He actually did by allowing veterans to get out of that system and into the private system. But, you know, the Veterans Administration delivers health care like the mail, the post office delivered your Christmas cards this year. You know, it barely it happens. And when it does, it's, uh, you know, three or four weeks too late. Exactly. And especially in this case, a time is of the essence, especially for anyone who is a cancer patient, for them to get their diagnosis and their subsequent treatment exactly. and then for them to get screenings, of course.
Christopher Briggs, thank you so much again for sharing your daughter's story, Colette, who I believe she is seven years old now. She's seven years old. Yeah, no. And actually, let me just say before you go, yes. um, this book, this book behind me, which is a new way to care. I've become associated with the Independent Institute out in Oakland, California. And this book by John Goodman, I've gotten to know John Goodman quite a bit. He's actually considered to be he's the father of health savings accounts. And actually, if the Republicans are going to pass a plan to repeal this awful law, it's going to be John Goodman's ideas that, that are going to get it done. This is a new book out uh, just now. You can get it on Amazon. I really I strongly recommend it. A new way to care. Christopher Briggs, thank you so much again for providing your perspective. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much.